In this video, I'll walk you through two unique aspects of the MagPlus layout system. One is pinning, and the other is snapping. Pinning is the ability for objects to move dynamically when the user turns the device. What that means is that you as the designer, the creator, need to only do one layout to support both orientations. Let me show you what I mean using my iPad. Now what you're seeing in front of you here is my iPad just reflected up on my screen using mirroring. So you see this layout here in the portrait orientation. Now I'm going to turn my device to landscape and you can see that things moved around a little bit. Now you can see that if you look at the helmet and the goggles there are all the way over to the right side. Let me turn back and now you see they're still over to the right side but they're in a different place on those gloves. That's because the gloves stayed in the same spot while all of the other three objects you see here moved dynamically when I turned the device. It happens so quick that neither you nor the user really notices it's happening but you end up with two different layouts. So let's pop into InDesign and I'll show you really quickly how to create this. It's super simple to do and very powerful. So here's our pinning layout. Now both the layouts I'm going to reference in this video are available for you to download as part of our design examples out on the MagPlus support site. All of the files that you see referenced in these tutorial videos are there. All these layouts are fully built out so that you can download them, you can play with them, you can see how things were built, deconstruct them, etc. So you can sort of follow along as we're doing this. So you can see here in my layout that I've got some objects on my A layer and on my B layer and on my B pinned blocks layer. Now it's really important to know that pinning only works on the A layer and on the B pinned blocks layer. The B main content layer, what you see over here, is for things you want on that B background layer that you don't want to pin, that you want simply to stay in place and crop differently when the user turns the device. If you have things you want on that background layer but you do want them to move according to some pinning rules, you can put them here on the pinned blocks layer. And if you want content that behaves in that A layer way, that free scrolling A layer that the user can double tap to turn off, that goes here on the A layer. So our text box that we have here is on our A layer. And you can see over in the, when I select this object, over in my MagPlus object palette, the object type is a block. That's your basic uh, building block really for any MagPlus layout. And you can see that when I select this, I've got an option for horizontal pin. Now in the A layer, I can only pin things left to right because as far as the A layer is concerned, there is no bottom. It's a free scrolling layer, so it can move up and down. Now we can control where this is going to appear top to bottom in the layout, but that's in snapping, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you can see here that I've set the pinning using this pull down to left. Let me change this to none, and then we'll take a look at the effect of that. In fact, I'll change all of these elements, and then we'll see the difference between pinning on and pinning off. Here I've got a little caption over in the lower right corner, and this is on my B slides pinned blocks layer. Now that means that this is on my B layer, it's in that background, that A layer content is going to scroll over the top of it. But because the B layer always moves in full screen slides, it does have a bottom. The bottom of this guide here is the bottom of my portrait B orientation. So here I've got it horizontally pinned to the right side, you can see here, and vertically pinned to the bottom. Now it's important to know with pinning, one of the great features of it that gives you so much control is that pinning is calculated based on the relative distance to the edge of the screen. So you can see here that I've got just a little bit of space between the edge of this box and the edge of where the device's, device screen is going to come in. So when I turn, it's going to maintain that amount of distance from whatever the right side is. Similarly, here's our other block up here. Let me grab this whole group. And you can see that is right top pinned. So you can pin groups or individual objects. And as you can see, this is also in the pin blocks layer, but I can have two different pinnings on two different objects or multiple different objects on these background layers. So let's set all of these to none. Then we'll do a quick review and we'll see the effect of it. Then we'll turn the pinning back on and you can see the difference it makes. I really encourage you to do this as you're playing with pinning and trying to understand it to do a lot of changing settings and reviewing so that you can see what the effect really is. So let's pop back to our iPad. Now here in our vertical layout, in our, in our portrait orientation, you can see no difference, right? This looks the way it did before. Oh, let me turn my iPad back on. Now you can see when I turn the device that that caption is no longer visible entirely down here on the bottom. 
that the goggles are actually quite a distance from the right side and that this text box similarly is quite a distance from the left side. Let me turn back here so you can have another look. See how in this orientation the goggles butt up against the right side? But here in this orientation they're quite a ways away from it. So let's jump back in and turn on our pinning settings. So let's pin this back to the left side and let's pin this back to the right side and do another quick look. We won't do any vertical pinning right now. So here we go. And in this orientation. Now you can see that this text box is moved all the way over to the left and this caption is moved to the right, but that caption's not visible. That's on the B layer, so it's not going to move up when I scroll because the bottom of this B layer is the bottom of the screen. But at least it's moving left to right. So now let's make another quick adjustment. Let's change that to vertical pin bottom and let's grab this and say right and top. Now you'll note that I'm putting this inside of the visible boundaries here. It's whatever the orientation is that you're working within, it'll keep that distance. So here it's going to maintain this amount of distance from the very top of my visible screen to the top of, of the element that I'm pinning here. I'll show you what I mean when we fast review. All right, let's jump back onto our iPad. So you can see with those goggles that it's still about an inch or so from the top of the screen when I pin. When I turn this way, in both orientations, it's maintaining that distance from whatever the top of the screen is. And you can see that captions remaining butting against the bottom of the screen, again, whatever the bottom of that screen might be, depending on your orientation. There's ways you can get even more creative with pinning. It, things don't have to pin automatically to the side, or you don't have to choose to pin them to the side they're nearest. You can pin to the other side as well, and you can start to really move objects around and create whole new layouts when the user turns the device, or use pinning to reveal things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see. One quick other note, final note about pinning. I mentioned automatically pinning. Here in the MagPlus settings palette, you can check a box that says calculate default pinning. What this means, if this is checked, when you put a new object on either the pinned blocks or the A layer, the system will look at what edge it's closest to and automatically set the pinning for that. So you can have pinning happen without even ever really having to think about it. It's not something you have to go in and manually do if you don't want to. Or you can uncheck this and then decide on an object by object basis what you want to pin and what you don't. Even if you have it do it automatically, you can always come in here and change the settings. So that's a quick look at pinning. Now let's look at something else we call snapping. This is also really simple and another powerful tool for determining how layouts are going to look. Let me jump back out to our reviewer app and I'll show you this example we're going to look at and then again we'll pop back in and see how it, uh, how it looks in the actual device. There we go. So one of the default behaviors of the MagPlus architecture is that the A layer is free scrolling. Here I'm just moving it up and down with my thumb. I'm in control of what I see, what's on the screen. But now as I get to this second page, watch what happens with this little annotation box here. I'm pulling it down, I'm letting go of it, and it's snapping right back into to place so that it lines up with those numbers. Now this is still on the A layer, so as a user I can scroll this if I want to, but as soon as I let go of it, it's going to snap into place there. That's something we call snapping, and it's really useful for things like this, where you might want to line up something on the A layer with something on the B layer, or simply control what the layout's going to look like when the user gets to a certain uh, slide or a certain page in your layout. So let's go back into InDesign and see how simple this is to set. So here I've got my first page in this, and if we jump back out here, here you go. So this is what I see here in my layout. And snapping is really most useful for the second or third or bottom pages, not really the top one, because in the top one I'm deciding that this is where this text box is going to start simply by placing it here. So it's going to be here when the user opens up that layout, as you can see here, until they start to move it. I can set snapping on here if I want, so that if the user started to scroll it, it snaps back down into place. But for the most part on the first page, you're not going to need snapping. Where you're going to want to set it 
is on the second page because when it's going to happen is at that transition period. Let me jump back out here. So the transition from the first slide to the second slide of your layout, that would be the first page and the second page in your InDesign document, happens when the bottom of the A-layer content, that would be the bottom of this box right here, crosses the halfway point of the screen. That's when it tells the system, okay, whoop, bring in the new B slide and any content that's associated with that B slide on the A-layer. So in other words, bring in this page. So you can see when I move this in here, as I get up past that halfway point, boom, the new slide comes in and the A-layer comes along with it and snaps into place. The way I set that snapping is just by selecting the object here on my A-layer. And again, here I've got a nice big group of things. So I've got my text box plus my little pointers, all the things I want to snap against these uh, little numbers here. And over here in the MagPlus plugin in the object palette again, I just take this snap and I've chosen top. Now you'll see here in snap there's a few different options. There's none, which just means no snapping and it's free scrolling. Outer top, inner top, and top. The difference between those has to do with the two different orientations. The outer top is the outside, uh, the very top of the portrait orientation, this edge up here. The inner top is the top of the landscape orientation here. So if you want to make sure that something always snaps to one of those two edges, you're going to want to choose inner top or outer top. If you just want it to snap to whatever edge the, the user is holding the device in, you choose top. That's kind of a relative top, if you will. Let me just pop back out here and switch orientations and you'll see what I mean. So now I'm still lined up. I'm still snapping. You can see that it still snaps directly into place where I want it to be. Let me change a setting on here and you'll see the difference. So now let me say that I always want this to snap to outer top. Now that's going to work just fine in this portrait orientation, but you're going to see that in landscape it's not going to work as well. Because this box that I have, you can see it's lined up at the very top now. So this whole box, this whole group here, is going to snap up against that top edge right here. And that's what I want it to do in portrait, but in landscape I want it to actually snap down a little bit further. So let's just hit review and see how this changes. And let's pop back out here. So we'll look first in portrait. That looks just how we want it to look. But now when I turn it, you can see that this is snapping too high. That's because it's snapping again to this very outer edge here. If I change this to inner top, and let's pop back out here. And we'll look at it in landscape orientation first. So that's snapping now where I want it. Things are lining up. But when I turn it this way, they're too low, right? Because now this entire block is snapping against that inner top, which is about here on my layout. So what you want to do for something dynamic like this is to choose top. You're probably going to use top most often. There are only certain use cases where you want inner top or outer top to be selected. Now one other important note about snapping. You'll note that this object that we've been playing with here is a big group that actually goes all the way up to the top of my screen using this little invisible box that's part of the group. Now why would I do that rather than just group my little text box and my things here? Well, it's because snapping always is going to happen at the very top of the screen or whatever edge I've chosen. In this case, whatever the edge of the screen is, whether it's inner top or outer top again. But it's always going to go to the very top. In other words, I can't tell it to snap right to this spot, which is where I want this text box to actually be. So the way you get around that is by making a space between where you want that box to actually appear and the very top of the screen. And you do that by drawing an invisible box here and then grouping it all together. So let me quickly erase this box and show you what I mean. I'll show you what happens when you don't have this in place. So now I've got my little object here that I'm going to say snap to top. And let's hit the fast review and see how this looks. Jump back out here. So now I'm scrolling up 
and when I snap into place, you can see that's not at all how I want it to look. Now it's actually snapping all the way up on the top of the screen there. That's not what I want it to do. So the way to get around that again is to draw this invisible box that essentially creates a little spacer between the top of the screen and where you want this thing to appear. So now I'm going to group those things together. And the note when I group and ungroup things, now that I've grouped this, I've created a new object in the system's eye. So I have to reset my snapping and pinning settings here. So now let's fast review this, and it should work as we expect it to. Yep, and now I'm snapping into place right where I want it to be. You can see if I pull down, it's going to snap right back to that spot because what's actually happening is that invisible box is snapping up here to the top of the screen. It's just that I built in this space by grouping those together. So I hope this is a quick insight into the kind of power that snapping and pinning can give you when you're creating your layouts. As we said, Mag Plus is really just about layout and design. It's about creatively using all of the functionality and elements that this kind of dynamic canvas, this infinite digital canvas gives you to play with and how you present your information to people. I encourage you to go download these layouts and start playing with the snapping and pinning and you'll see how much fun it can be to use.